I think when you get, you're dealing with a large organization like Sony and you've got executive management that has a very high visibility of cybersecurity, they don't really understand all of the details and impacts. I think that it's safe to say that until a board level representative shows up and explains to the board that this is the Swiss cheese that we deal with every day, that these organizations are going to be attacked and they're going to be penetrated every day. So what changed? You, you told me earlier that North Korea probably had these capabilities or, you know, the hacking groups, they probably had these capabilities even a year ago. So why now? I think it's poking the bear. I think that, you know, we created the perfect storm. You know, it, look, at the, look at the reasoning that the, we gave uh, that organization for the, the parody bit in the movie and the, in the whole intention of making fun of a relatively prideful you know, co country. To me, it was, you know, it was our recipe for disaster. I think that there was a lot of bad decisions made in just applying common sense in regards to, you know, hey, what is the risk model of this? Do we really want to, you know, make fun of a nation state that has a young dictatorship that clearly understands the capability of the internet, well-funded, very smart individuals that work for them? Do we really want to mess with that guy? Can you explain to me the hacker group Unit 121? So the U Unit 121 is a highly sophisticated organization under the military uh, branch of the People's Republic of, of North Korea. And what this group is designed to do is to advance their cyber warfare capabilities of either in detection, offensive, and de defensive strategy, as well as any type of military advantage that you might necessarily need in a, in a, when it comes to being a nation state. Tell us a little bit more. You told me earlier that maybe these guys are, are highly trained since the age of 16. Look at it as if you took some natural prodigies of internet programming. You, they come from a relatively suppressed, hardworking country. And then you, you, know, you give them benefits and rewards of doing great work with maybe no moral standard of doing right or wrong. What can companies like Sony, I mean, do to protect themselves? You help companies all the time protect themselves, but what, what can yeah. a company like Sony do to protect themselves against this level of attack? Educate your employees. Insider threat, even if it's out of ignorance or incompetency, employees are your almost most dangerous asset in a way. So you used to, you used to help out Sony, you used to advise them. Did, did they seem to have a good grasp on this? You know, when we started, this was a whole, the, the internet was just taking shape. No, not at all. I mean, we literally, were, we had our hands full. Every consumer electronics division, every, you know, area of internet uh, of where Sony was relatively a big brand back in the, uh, you know, early 2000s when it came to consumer products. You know, we, they were, let's just say we were very busy because you're dealing with a rapid exponential increase of dependency on the internet. And if we are growing faster on internet dependency than the competency of the board and the leadership, you have obviously a huge delta of risk and a competence and an intellectual gap.